Hi, I'm Roberta Camarena, and I'm currently Director of Chancellor Community Relations here at UC San Diego, and I'm a proud alumna of UC San Diego Biochemistry Cell Biology degree with minors in math and Spanish. Um, I graduated from Thurgood Marshall College, and I'm also a proud parent of a graduate uh, student. Hi, I'm Elijah Camarena. I'm a graduating senior with a math degree from Ravel College, and I'm prospecting a PhD program. I was born in Tijuana, um, Baja California, Mexico, and I had a, I guess you could call lower, lower middle class um, uh, childhood, maybe even lower, lower class actually, um, as I think about it. Coming from San Isidro, we were at subsidized housing, single parent household. Uh, my mom's education was up to second grade in Mexico. And then she decided to study here in the United States and she went up to the eighth grade um, to able to capture English. Um, so I would say that her encouragement and support for us, um, sib myself and my siblings to go on to university was, was highly um, emphasized. However, we didn't have the resources at home, right? She didn't have the experience um, of going to college. So I was a first gen student, everything was our first. And as I started getting involved in school and started uh, moving up in my academics, I found that I had myself to turn to and I had to use the resources around me to be able to succeed academically and socially in my environment. Um, San Isidro is a border town, so everybody, regardless of where you're from originally, ends up speaking dual uh, languages, both English and Spanish, and if they come from like Iraq, then they speak three languages. Um, if they come from the Philippines, they end up speaking three languages. Um, so I was uh, fully bilingual growing up, and um, I just really loved our community because we still were able to um, experience what was important in Mexico and all the cultural aspects, as well as be able to now capture a new uh, culture here in the United States. Well, it helps when your older sister comes to UC San Diego. Um, so my sister Eva had come to UC San Diego before me um, as a computer science degree. And as I visited the campus, I honestly just felt at home. I felt like UC San Diego was a place that would welcome me, support me, encourage me, and where I would thrive. So um, let's go back to the 90s because I actually um, applied when it was a hard copy application, um, in which case you had to get the application from your counselor, take it to the post office, all filled out. And um, when I was in high school, I wasn't necessarily encouraged to apply to four year directly. Even though my sister had come here, I was encouraged to go maybe seek out community college. And so I didn't apply on time. Um, on the day that the applications were due, my sister came to my house and was like, did you get your application in? And I was like, no. So we quickly filled it out, ran it to the post office, and we were literally two minutes late at midway um, to the post office that closed at midnight. Um, so obviously I didn't get admitted, and I did go to community college, but I, I think that fate has a way of just working out things, right? I met my husband who tutored me in calculus. He was a student there as well. And um, then I transferred to UC San Diego, and I, um, it was a little bit difficult, I'm gonna be honest with you, because like I said, as I was originally a math major, I didn't find myself in the um, arena of having other mathematicians that would help me through the process, and so um, I submitted my, my application um, by, again, walking it over to the post office and um, waiting to see what the end result would be. I get teary-eyed even right now just thinking about it because it was something that, although, as I mentioned, my sister had come to UC San Diego because I'd already experienced a rejection of UC San Diego, there was no surprise if they would to have rejected me again because I really didn't understand the admissions process to start with. And when I opened up the envelope, and in those days, you didn't go through an email to see if you got admitted or through a portal. It was literally a huge envelope that came to your house. And even then, you were still hesitant about opening it just in case you didn't get admitted. But as soon as I knew I was admitted, um, we didn't have Facebook, so I couldn't announce it in social media. So we picked up the phone and just started calling everybody, my abuelita, my tias, my tios, and letting them know that I had gone admitted and um, everybody was just ecstatic.
So as an initial mathematics degree major, um, I found that I was the only Latina, the only female, the only black student. Um, so I was the only in many capacities in my upper division mathematics classroom. So I didn't find that um, community that I needed. And um, when I took a uh, biology class and I had Dr. Brown as my biology instructor, and he was um, black, a black um, professor, I was like, hey, there's somebody here that's my color. There's somebody here that understands my struggle. And so just with that, I sought him out a little bit more and I took a course called Methods of Inquiry, which helped me to understand how I best learn. And because of that experience, I changed my major to um, biochemistry, cell biology, so that I could take Dr. Brown again and I then took um, his bacteriology class, which was amazing. And I found that I had an equal passion for the sciences and biology as I had for the math. And so it was, all the faculty were very warm, very welcoming. I think there was a little bit more, actually a lot more, let's just be honest, there was a lot more diversity within the biology department than there was in the math department. And um, so I found myself again at home. And therefore, switching my major was, was no brainer, right? And um, because I had taken so many classes in math, I went and continued in the math to finish my minor. And I took Spanish because um, I didn't want to lose my Spanish language. And I wanted to understand not only the culture, the history, the um, just everything about the different communities that speak Spanish because I I discovered as I was taking literature classes that there were Spanish speakers I mean, you know it, but you don't think about it, that there's Spanish speakers all over the world. Coming back to UC San Diego was uh, critical because there's work to be done, right? After I was a teacher, I taught every subject you could think of. Um, and after teaching for 15 years, I saw that there was a need. Um, there, that advocacy was very important to me. And we need diversity across the university. We need diversity that represents California. And it, I saw that the, the needle hadn't moved very far from when I was an undergraduate. And I thought that the best way for me to be able to move that needle is to go back into admissions. So I went back and got my master's and came back, um, I think a little bit more powerful, more experienced and more confident. And um, I was able then to serve as the assistant director of admissions diversity recruitment specifically because that was my passion and my goal and my, my mission. And I think that in the last six years, I've been able to really change the needle quite a bit. And um, I love collaboration. I love partnership. I love um, bringing people together, bringing folks with like minds together. And I was able to do that in that role. And um, yeah, I think it was, it was necessary, not only for myself, but for the university to have Roberta come back. And I'm really glad that I did. I transferred and I really was looking at just California schools and UC San Diego was just like a shining beacon among the schools that really called out to me, especially, you know, my mother being an alum. Um, I think it just made sense, you know, it made a lot of sense for me to come here and, you know, visiting the campus, it's beautiful. It's genuinely like an amazing campus, really big. I love, funnily enough, I love walking um, and I saw that it's like, okay, you can't drive everywhere, you have to walk and that means something to me, you know, to be active. And so, yeah, the campus just spoke to me um, when I visited and applied, and yeah, it was a locked-in deal. My family, when I got into UC San Diego, was like, it was like fanfare, you know, like people were so happy. My, you know, my aunt, who also is an alum of UC San Diego, um, very supportive. And yeah, I mean, getting into college is a triumph, whether you're first generation, second generation, whatever. Getting into college and getting into a place that you're really going to thrive it just means something, you know, and so my family um, was always supportive of seeing, you know, the next generation take its place and grow into adulthood. I study uh, mathematics and I'm in Ravel College. Um, so kind of with math study, I'm a pure math major, so I get everything, you know, I go from one side of math to the other side and there's nothing, you know, that I can't take as an elective in terms of math. Um, and so, yeah, I really tried to focus a lot on just the theoretical aspects because to me, 
um, it's always been like a challenge. You know, it's like getting an understanding is higher than just being able to solve a problem because when you actually understand the inner workings, you can apply that to so many different things outside of your specific field of study. There were times where I wasn't really sure I wanted to do math. I wasn't really sure I wanted to, you know, get a degree. Um, and that was after coming here. You know, before coming here, I was like 100% focused. I was like, oh, I need to go to college. I need to, I was planning on getting a, d a dual PhD in math and physics. You know, I had my whole plan set up. And then when I got here, you know, I, I realized like, I, this isn't exactly what I thought it was, you know? And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with getting to a place and it still being a good thing but having questions, you know, and having, you know, a, a moment to step back. And I think that's really what college is, is it's about, you know, finding where you need to be and striving for that. And it is a, it's a journey, you know, it's a hard journey. There's going to be pitfalls, there's going to be mountains you have to climb. But I think ultimately um, you're going to get to the end of that journey and be better for it. You know, it's worth sticking through. Yeah, when I, when I was like having, you know, these doubts about college, about, um, yeah, going, what am I going to do for work? You know, what am I really seeking after in my life? Um, my parents were always supportive of me and th there were hard conversations, you know, it's not like everything was sunshine and roses, you know, when I come back and I'm like, hey, I'm not sure I want to get a degree. You know, there was, there was a lot of, you know, just emotion there. And, and I think definitely I never was questioning that I had support from my parents. And I think that is something, you know, not everybody can say. You know, even when somebody is on the path that their parents want for them, they can still be questioning that, right? They can still be unsure of that, unsure of the support that they're getting. But with my parents, I never had that question. And I think that was like, to me, such a blessing to have parents that were willing to, you know, support me in whatever I was going to do. And, you know, whenever I had those questions, I would come and talk to my parents. You know, I wasn't afraid to talk to them about these things, um, whether it was difficult or not. So, yeah, just that that was like, you know, completely unheard of. I think to me, having um, so much doubt and still having support in that. I, I didn't know what that looked like until college. I trust that Elijah is intelligent. I trust that he's passionate. I trust that he's centralized in who he is as a person. And because of that, I think it made it easier for my husband and I to allow Elijah to navigate um, and dive into different experiences that weren't the ones that we had in line for him, right? Elijah's his own person. He's not my um, personality is not me. And so I think it's important for him to find out who it is that he is and what it is that is important to him. I came as a first um, gen student, right? I didn't have a parent that I could go to and even have a discussion about the classes that I was taking and believe that she could conceptualize the topics. And Elijah has that. He can, he can go through a particular class. He can have an assignment um, and come to myself or my husband, and we can have an intelligent conversation about what he's actually studying. That makes a huge difference, I think, for um, the scholar experience. Uh, just this weekend, Elijah came over, and he's doing a, a Spanish project, and I was able to help him dive through that and dissect it a little bit more and, and look a little deeper than the surface that he wanted to go into. And so I didn't have that, right? I did have a, a, a mother who supported me, who encouraged me, who loved me, um, which some students don't even have that. But I didn't have an academic at home that I could go to and have conversations with about the topics that I was learning about, right? And I think that, that makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to echo um, what you just said about um, having that, you know, just level of support that is to the depth that it is. Um, because, yeah, having conversations about everything that I'm talking about, you know, everything that I'm going through, everything that I'm experiencing, I can talk, you know, and, and communicate that. And, and it's like, oh, I get it. I get what you're going through. I get what you're saying, you know, and it's, it's not 
often that you have people who you can just trust with anything. You know, you can talk to them about anything in your life and you can have a conversation. You know, it's not just you pouring it out, but it's like you get feedback, you get assistance, you get, you know, support in a way that, um, yeah, just not having an understanding there, it would be hard, it would be difficult. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely having support, um, I would say, uh, it's kind of a defining factor for me. Um, I definitely would not have pursued um, this campus if I didn't have the support of my parents. You know, I, I just don't think it would have happened. Um, and it's not to say that I wouldn't be capable of it, but I wouldn't want it in a sense. You know, it's like I wouldn't be seeing the possibilities if not for the support of my parents and kind of lifting me up so that I could strive for more. And so I think that's where, yeah, having my parents both very educated, very intelligent, and very driven people um, behind me to lift me up is just like amazing. Um, and, and yeah, it's an experience I cherish. Being multi-generational Tritons is huge. When I was an undergrad, I was on a really, really tight budget. And um, I'm sure that for students or families or community that visits our bookstore, the prices there can be a little outside of budgets, right? If, especially if you're in a tight budget. And so I would look at the bookstore only when they had sales. And they had a spring sale, they would have a winter sale. And um, I went during one of those times where they had a sale and they had a sweatshirt that said UCSD mom. And that was before we had our UC San Diego um, uh, branding, right? So it was, everything was UCSD. And I bought this sweatshirt from my mom and proudly gave it to her. I saved it, I got it in spring and I saved it for six months to give it to her for Christmas. And she wore it with this just huge pride and I have pictures with her wearing it. And um, my mom, as I mentioned, is, is very um, supportive, uh, very sensitive, and very keen. Um, even though she may not know deriver <laughs> differential equations or derivatives, she definitely understands the value of community. And so she saved that sweatshirt. She put it aside and put it in a little box and she tucked it away. And um, she had vision beyond my vision. And when Elijah got admitted to UC San Diego, she took out that sweatshirt and for Christmas, um, I get emotional because she gave me that sweatshirt. And so I got to wear that sweatshirt now as a UC San Diego mom, and I got to wear it with pride. And um, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful moment. It still is obviously emotional for me. Yeah, yeah, just that, that to me is like, you know, being able to be a fulfillment of that dream, you know, fulfillment of generational, um, just like, passion and and just all of that work that was put in to to lift us up you know the next generation just it took so much behind that that i i didn't see you know like me being a kid you, when you're a kid you just you play and you don't know what your parents did to get you those toys you know being a kid you don't know what your parents did to get you access to the things you have access to you know all the food that you get to eat whatever you know whatever it is but now as an adult i get to see that you know i can see and and appreciate all the work you know that that led to me being where i am and and it's you know more than my lifetime could could bring me to this point um so yeah i just really appreciate you know my my generational um heritage of academics and and here at ucsd um, it's evident number one put yourself first i think that in, the, in our society, there's a lot of opportunities to serve others, and that doesn't mean that you're not putting yourself first. What I mean by that is take care of yourself. Mental health, physical health, um, it's just so important. Finding community is, is critical. Um, and um, as scholars look to universities, I always tell them, look to see if it's gonna be a place that's gonna support you, regardless of what you're going through in life, right? Um, I love that here at UC San Diego, we have CAPS, we have the different centros, Raza Centro, BRC, LGBT. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for students to find their own space across the institution. Um, and as I, I tell students, as they're comparing different universities, to ask themselves, do they provide you the necessary support for you to thrive? 
not just survive, not just graduate, but actually thrive as an individual, as a person across the university? Um, and, and if the answer is, is yes at an institution, then I, then I say go to it, right? Um, not every scholar is gonna come to UC San Diego, um, but the goal is to have that beautiful, diverse group here at the university so that as they interact with each other, they're building up each other, right? Um, that's number one. Regardless of whether a student is in elementary school, junior high, or high school, I always tell them, take care of yourself, check yourself. Am I okay? What do I need? And provide that for themselves because everything else will be successful if they're in a good state of mind. So yeah, I would say connected to that, you know, my major advice is look for resources, you know, because they're out there and there's so much money being funneled into, you know, growing resources for specific groups, specific majors, all this stuff exists. But if you're not grabbing hold of it, it's going to pass you by. And I think that's something that, you know, to me, when I started into, you know, college, I was like, okay, I just need to do it. You know, I need to get through it. I need to do what I have to do. And I'm going to get there, you know, but without having that support, I really wouldn't have been able to do it. And so I think that, you know, take advantage of the community stuff. You know, it's like as a transfer, they actually have things devoted to transfers and not everybody knows that there's, you know, there's the tra Triton Transfer Hub. There's, you know, transfer based organizations. You can do all kinds of stuff at UCSD just for transfers. And I think that's a blessing. It's a gift to us, but if you're not accepting it, then, you know, it's, it's just going to waste, at least for you, you know? And so it's not, you know, you don't have to get involved with everything, but do something, you know, do be part of something and it's going to pay dividends, you know, over the course of your life. Don't, don't wait until after, you know, the time where you had time to rearrange your schedule and figure things out. You know, those first weeks, the quarter starts moving really quickly. And so I think, you know, take the time to get situated. Because once you're going, you're not going to have time to look back. You know, you just have to keep moving forward. Um, and I'm just really grateful that I took that little time and actually by my mom's recommendation, I took that time to go and look at orgs. Because I wouldn't have done it if she hadn't told me, hey, it's worth your time, you know? And, and so, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be able to take part in, you know, and be a small part of something that I couldn't have orchestrated. You know, I think like people, you know, I think it, it's very true that people of the modern generations have a desire to be part of something bigger, to be part of, you know, some kind of mission or um, at just like a, a grand goal that's just larger, larger than life. And these communities are that, you know, these communities are something that's larger than yourself that without individuals, it doesn't happen. So yeah, community is one of those things that you have to pour time into but it's also you know, gonna pour a lot into you if you take part. Um, so yeah, be a part of something. <sighs> the best part of being Elijah's mom is honestly when he looks at me with a sense of pride. Like this is my mom and I'm so proud of her. And I don't think that anyone can experience that until you experience it. To have somebody look at you as an infant and think the world of you. And as they grow, they, you know, they become their own person. But as an adult, to look at you and think the world of you still, that's incredible. Yeah. You're just gonna have me in tears too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say, you know, yeah, just being the child of my mom um, is just, it's a, it's a blessing beyond words, you know, because you, you can't, you don't get to choose. You don't get to choose who your family is. You don't get to choose um, where you're going to grow up, how you're going to grow up, any of that stuff. You know, it's not something that you have power over. And, and that's your vulnerability, you know, as a, as a child, is, is your parents are everything to you, you know. And so I, I'd say, um, you know, with academics, you know, the, the, the thing about academics is you, you can only, value it in so much as you appreciate it. You know, having access to knowledge, understanding information, you know, a space to talk with other uh, individuals, um, all that stuff, it's only useful to you if you use it. And, and so you have to know how to use it. You have to know how to, to really 
take hold of it and, and let it change you in the ways you need to change and, and let it grow you in a way that you know you need to grow. And, and that's something I get from my mom. You know, it's, 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 some, it's a, a place of, of humility where you're saying, you know, I, I can put all of this work and, and trust that I'm going to reap the benefits, you know? And, and, it's, and it's, you know, you, you have to just, you have to learn that from somebody. You, it comes from somewhere, you know? And, and my parents, and, and especially my mom, you know, just worked so hard to, to give us that appreciation, you know, for something that it, it, to me has never been lacking. You know, I've never lacked for opportunity of education, um, or, or opportunity to, to just have space to grow. Um, and, and that's a, a, an environment, a culture that my mom put in place. You know, she worked to make that a thing. Um, and, and I just wouldn't have that. You know, I wouldn't have that without my mom. And so I, I just, you know, I have to say <laughs> that there's no greater blessing than great parents in this life um, because it, it doesn't matter what you, where you end up, after that, you know, you, you've already been set off on the right course, you know, for your whole life. You've, you, you were traveling in the right direction. Um, there's, nothing, there's nothing to change about that. You know, there's nothing that I have to, to look back into my past and say, yeah, I really need to overcome this. You know, my past for my parents is something that I, I just get to live in. I get to, I get to, you know, just continue on in a way that I've, I've been raised. Um, and, and not everybody can say that, you know, so I recognize it as a, as a great blessing.